Welcome everybody to this webinar. Um, my name is Tom Devine, and before we get into it, let's just take a look at these three scenarios here. Um, so scenario one, you introduce an HDMI 2.1 source, that being a PS5, Xbox Series X, or PC into your installation. How does that device work with all your legacy devices in that system? Monitors, TVs, projectors, audio systems. Scenario two, you have a source and it's going to a sync, but you need to extract audio. How are you going to do that when the display doesn't have stable audio input or you're dealing with an HDMI 2.1 source? Scenario three, your simple video distribution system isn't sending the best possible signal. How do you manage EDID to get the best picture? Well, today we are going to talk exactly about that. So we are going to be talking about our 8K scaler from AV Pro Edge. And so I wanna thank everybody for joining us on this webinar today. My name is Tom Devine, I'm with AV Pro Edge and I'm here to talk about our newest product. Um, I do have the questions right here and open. So if you do have any questions, if you're having trouble hearing me or seeing me or seeing the presentation when I have it up, just let me know and I can see right away. Um, but what we're gonna be talking about is our AC SC1X. And this is an 8K downscaler, EDID manager and audio de-embedder. So we're gonna go through this entire thing here. Um, I'm gonna show you guys some different slides. I'm gonna show you where it fits, um, how integrators will wanna use it, and then how you as uh, installers are going to be able to fit this exact product into a bunch of installations to help you close products, or excuse me, close installations. You're able to move on to the next one and we can work with a lot of the older equipment when your customer calls up and says, hey, my son just got a PS5. How am I gonna integrate this into my system? My son just got a, an Xbox Series X. Well, this device is going to allow you, or is going to help you in doing exactly that. All right, so let's talk about this uh, device. This is an AK uh, downscaler. You have a single input and you have uh, two outputs, and we'll talk about why you have two outputs. Um, you have audio extraction and EDID management. That's gonna be basically what this device is going to be doing for you. Um, so let's uh, get a little bit into it. Uh, this scaler is able to handle uh, signals up to 40 gigabits per second in bandwidth. Uh, it's an FRL5 device is what that means. Um, it's not able to scare, scale variable refresh rate, and that's an HDMI 2.1 feature where the signal is constantly in flux. Um, so make sure that you uh, understand that if you are using some VRR content. Uh, it is built for downscaling. It has three different downscaling modes. You can take 8K and then move that down to 4K, or you can take 8K and move that down to 1080p, or you're able to take 4K and move that down to 1080p. Um, it's HDMI 2.1, HDCP 2.3, so all of the newest content and the newest sources and the newest displays are going to be um, work perfectly with this device, even the HDMI 2.1s. Um, and then it also has de-embedded audio. We can have de-embedded two-channel audio or multi-channel. Um, we can go over some of those different ways that you can extract. This is not a down mixer, of course, so if you do are looking for down mixing a lot of channels into a two-channel, we have the answer for you as well. It's just not this product. All right. So now we're going to look at this a little closer. Um, let's take a look at this at this right now. So I'm going to, what I'm gonna do here is we are just going to open this box up and then we'll look exactly at what this scaler is and what comes in the box. And then we can kind of take a look at each one of those ports um, through our presentation. All right. So you open the box, the first thing you're going to get is the scaler. This is the scaler. You can see it has front buttons right here. We have our uh, input right here, our outputs right here, and we'll get a little bit closer look at that. But before we get into that, just show you what else it comes with here. So you have your USB-C cable and USB-C wall ward adapter, so you can power this. Um, you know, you can plug in USB-C A here, and you plug it into the unit USB-C right here. Um, you also get a mini toss converter that can uh, converts toss link 
into a mini toss link that can fit in a 3.5 millimeter jack. And we will talk about that. You also get mounting plates. So you have your mounting plates and screws and you get your RS-232 connection right here um, for sending commands to this. So that's everything that's in the box. We'll set this off to the side here and just look at this unit right now. So we're gonna take a look at this unit right here a little bit closer. So I'll get back and share my screen here with you. All right, so as you can see, we have these um, four buttons, right? And it has a little screen on it. So actually, once it's plugged in and being used, you can see this data, you can see this resolution that's coming through, and then you can actually manipulate it to change the scaling or the audio de-embedding or choose the edit right here through the screen. Of course, you can also use the API and send it serial commands to do that. And you can do that through the USB-C or the um, RS-232 port. So we have our USB-C port. This would be on this side right here. That's how you're going to power it. But like I, we said, you can also um, control the device. You have an HDMI input. This is going to be handling uh, HDMI signals up to 40 gigabits per second. So we get, we're taking a huge jump. You know, HDMI 2.0, we were at 18 gigabits per second. That was pretty hard a lot of times to get. Well, guess what? We're working super hard. Our engineers are pushing this through so we can do um, actually 40 gigabits per second. And then you have your RS-232. Um, I had a question come in, so I just want to check it out. Why not a traditional power um, supply connection? The reason they ask this question, because they'd like to have, it's good to have the combo. And the real reason for that is because this is really easy, but it will run off very low power. So a lot of times you can just plug this into the USB port on the back of your TV or in your projector, and then you can stick it in here. And then that is the real reason why, why we uh, you chose the USB-C power that way. And then if you notice here, James also, we're just limited on how much, how many more ports we can put on this. We actually filled both sides, so we can't, we don't have room for an additional traditional power supply method. But great question, James, and I love to have the question, so keep them coming throughout the entire presentation here. And so now let's look at our other end. You can see it has two HDMI outputs, but these are not a HDMI output one and HDMI output two. Okay, these are two outputs that one is called L looped and one is S scaled. The scaled um, output will always be scaled. So if you put 8K through it, you will never get 8K out of the scaled output because it will always be downscaling. But if you did want that 8K signal, that's why we have this loop out port as well. So we can always just send the uncompressed signal that whatever comes in out of the loop out. But if you are going to send an, uh, any signal in, it will always be scaled coming out of output two. And so that's why you have your two ports. And um, we'll go over in this uh, training a bunch of cool ways, um, you know, how you can utilize both these ports for your installations. And then we have our audio extraction. Of course, you can use one of these HDMIs for audio extraction, but we also have this 3.5 millimeter jack that's going to allow you to do mini toss link or uh, your, your classic aux cable. All right. So we talked about 40 gigabits per second and we talked about, um, you know, FRL5. That's what this device is. Um, so if we kind of look at what technology is out right now, um, we are using a 40 gigabit per second um, maximum bandwidth. And as you can see, the HDMI 2.1 spec actually allows for FRL6, allowing up for 48 gigabits per second. So you may be saying, Tom, well, why aren't you guys doing 48 gigabits per second? And the real reason is because the chips aren't there yet. Even though it's written into the spec, there's not signaling coming through at that speed. So right now, your Xbox Series X, that's going to be an FRL5 device because it can do 40 gigabits per second. Your PS5s, that's going to be your FRL4 device that can do 32 gigabits per second. And then like your Apple TV, the brand new 4K one that can do 4K 120, that is able to do FRL3, which is 24 gigabits per second. So even the latest sources on the market right now aren't able to do that. The only source that you're going to find doing FRL6 is your video graphics cards, the GPUs that, you know, 
um, people building custom computers use, and they can select 48 gigabits per second. But if they needed to use this product right here with uh, uh, one of those GPUs, it's no problem. You can change that graphics card to just set it to be FRL5 or ensure that no more than 40 gigabits comes out. And now if we look at actually all of the signals that we are seeing today from Netflix and security cameras to um, you know, Blu-ray players to Kaleidoscape to everything in between, every signal that we could find, we have it all kind of broken down here and what's available. But you'll notice FRL6, you're really not losing anything but the 12-bit color. And if we know anything about color depth, that we're not even really there for 12-bit uh, color. We're, we're in a 10-bit system. That's what our panels are right now. So you can see FRL5, you can still get 8K30, 8K60, 10K30, 10K60. Um, and you're still going to be under that 40 gigabits per second, allowing those signals to pass. And if it can, you can pass any of those signals, boom, you can pass it into this scaler. And then we can start manipulating it and making sure that that signal can go play nicely with any of the HDMI 2.0 devices that are on the market. All right. So let's talk about the quick installation. Before we get into the connection diagram and just skipped ahead here, I do wanna talk about how you install this. And this is um, very simple. I, would, I am really pointing it out to show how simple this really is. So you have, you connect the HDMI input, you connect the HDMI output, you connect the power supply, you turn on the input, you turn on the output, and then you're ready to start controlling it. And we're controlling it using this uh, feature right here on the front. It's a, on the main menu. Um, you just click enter, the main menu pops up, and then you're, you'll be able to use the up, down, and enter buttons to go through the three menu items. And there's only three. Your first one is EDID, your second one is a scaler, and your third one is uh, extracted audio. And really the only extracted audio, you can just turn it on or off. So those are kind of your features for uh, the entire device. So now let's look at where this can be set up at. If we look at this diagram, this is going to be your most simplified system, right? You have a HDMI 2.1 source, and then you have a 1080p display or projector or whatever else you want to play nicely with your 2.1 support, your source. You place this device in between, you connect HDMI cables to both devices, we scale it to 1080p, and now we can play, take an 8K signal that comes out of an HD, uh, HDMI 2.1 device and then play it on this 1080p display. Now, one of the bonuses that we're showing in this right here is that you have this 8K display, right? So now we can come out of the loop out and I can show the exact same content on my 1080p display, maybe that's at the bar, and then you have at the home theater in your basement, you have a big 8K display. You can show the stuff at the exact same time with this simple device. So now let's talk a little bit about audio free run and how a lot of integrators are going to be using this right away. And that is going to be right now AVRs and in, in, in general, AVRs do not go bad very often and the this type of signals and the kind of speakers maybe you bought five, 10 years ago, though that system probably still sounds amazing. But how are you going to introduce a Xbox Series X or a brand new TV into your device or into this environment where you have a 10 year old audio system? Well, you could use the 42X, our first, you know, the world's first 4K matrix switcher from us. And you could use the DA14, the, um, 8K distribution amplifier that has scaling. But if you want to even have a lower cost option, you can use this. And it works just like this diagram. So we have an HDMI 2 source that comes in, and this could even be a VRR, right? Because we said we didn't downscale VRR, but that's okay. We can still extract audio during to a VRR signal. So even if it was a 4K, 120 hertz uh, VRR signal with Dolby Atmos um, audio, we can pass it right on through our scaler and out of the scaled output, we'll go into a 10 year old AVR. It could go out to HDMI port or it could always go out of that audio extraction port as well. And then if it goes out of the HDMI port, it will we will remove the video completely and just play a test pattern. And that in turns allows your AVRs to not worry about the video, only concentrate on the audio, giving your system amazing audio. And then out of your loop out port 
in that same exact room where it has all its speakers surrounding it, where that coming from that AVR, you have your 8K display. And now you are able to send an 8K display uncompressed to your TV to get the best picture. And you're able to send a uh, the best possible sound to your AVR. Uh, it really truly is a, a pretty pretty slick system. And with everybody having trouble finding AVRs right now, you may be able to start closing jobs right now, moving on to the next one, so that just by adding this little device um, to, to your installation. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about that audio output, right, guys? We have an audio output. It's, it, it's, you can use HDMI for your audio output like we showed in the last diagram, and that's gonna work perfectly. We have audio free run, so we'll change it to a test pattern. But another way, is through your mini toss uh, and at the same time, uh, two channel stereo, 3.5 millimeter jack. So you can use two different types of connectors. You can use your classic aux cable, that's gonna give you two channel. And then you can get multi-channel, anything you can get over toss link. And uh, which toss link is used, it's, you see it on the back of TVs, on AVRs all the time. But you usually don't see it like that. And that's why we have this, uh, little converter that we leave in the box for you so that you'd be able to use this to use this audio extraction port. Now let's talk a little bit about EDID Blend. Um, this has robust EDID management. EDID management is it allows you to force your source to send better signals that you know your system can handle, allowing you to get the best picture possible on screen. And by using EDID management with this, what we're able to do is exactly that. You could have a source going directly to the uh, a TV, putting this in between and choosing what kind of signals that get sent to that TV instead of having the TV decide for you. Now, even more, if I had an AVR and a, a source, let's look like this. So I have my HDMI 2.1 source and I want to use the EDID um, from the AVR for audio and I wanted to use the um, video EDID from the um, video, I can actually combine those two EDID blocks into one EDID, ask that from my source, and I can do that by manipulating this device right here with the EDID blend features. If you choose EDID blend, now it's going to take the best possible sound because your AVR is going to ask for the best possible sound. It's going to ask for the best possible video because that's what your 8K TV is asking for. It combines them and now you get the best possible signal for your customer going above and beyond. Just by adding this little device and, and manipulating the, the processing in the EDID and putting all that control in your hands. All right. So the one of the reasons that it's always important to use AV Pro, or it's nice to use AV Pro Edge is because we have your back, right? This device is under a 10 year um, you know, warranty where you do not have to worry about it. It is a no BS warranty. If something's going on, we fix it for you. We help you ask. If you haven't installed with us before, you could talk to all the integrators that have. If they have a problem, we help them out right away. And that's how we've been able to grow. We know that HDMI can be fit finicky whether you're using this or that or a subpar cable or trying to use category cable trying to go through walls electrical interference there's tons of things that can go wrong but we are experts in all of those things and we can help you this is a huge helper tool our original se1 which is the first version of this the 4k version of this is a product that we sell hundreds of each month and a lot of integrators just keep those in their tool belt or in their truck so that when they do have a troubled source or they do have a projector that's older, they have a way to make that thing work immediately. Um, and that is all backed under our 10 year warranty. Um, now we are talking about HDMI 2.1. So now we have to actually talk about HDMI 2.1 cables. It may be that the cables your installer has been using for years and years and years are not gonna cut the mustard. So you do need to make sure that you're using HDMI 2.1. We suggest bullet train cables. Um, we make them, they are the best cables around in our eyes. Uh, we have sh anything from short to long. If it does get too long, we switch it over to fiber optics. And when it is fiber optics, we can send it long, long distances. Um, so you can still get 8K anywhere you want in your distribution. Now, if you have any more um, questions, no problem. 
just reach out to us. Um, we're available anytime, info at avproedge.com. If you have any questions for me, my name's Tom. Um, it's tom at avproglobal.com, and, um, and I'd be happy to answer anything for you. This, the best part about uh, us doing products and product launches is now that I'm doing this training, if you're watching it, you can get one of these. It's shipping today. This is available that is out there. It's already gone through our lab. It's gone through the ringer. We're ready to be shipping these. So, all right, that is uh, everything I have here for you today, guys. I know this is a little bit shorter of a training than normal, um, but it's a pretty simple product, right? We're not talking about a AV over IP system or a big system here. Um, what we're talking about is this scaler. Um, so I am excited to get this into your hands. And I'll tell you, honestly, guys, I'm also excited to finish up this training because I had to turn the air conditioner off and it's 96 degrees here in Sioux Falls today. So you could probably see I'm sweating up a storm. That was maybe a bad idea. Maybe I should have just went with the um, air conditioner in the background. But I hope this training was useful for you. Um, once again, thanks again for coming out and, and, and attending this training. I really appreciate it. And you guys have a great day.